this right now from Aviva Stadium. On behalf of every red-blooded, football-loving, glass-raising American who made it here to the Emerald Isle, we welcome you to the return of Saturdays the way they should be, folks. A significant ACC conference game. And here come the number 10 Florida State Seminoles, the defending ACC champs. From the history-rich and magnificent city of Dublin, Ireland, it's the 2024 Aer Lingus Football Classic as you're watching the ACC on ESPN. As we welcome you here to Dublin, high above Aviva Stadium, Joe Tessitore alongside Jesse Palmer. Fitting, this season starts in this unique setting because this is arguably the most transformational year in modern college football history. We have new rules. We have conference realignment, and finally, the much-anticipated 12-team college football playoff. The remnants of last year's college football playoff, much-criticized snub, still in the air a little bit, but you talk to folks here in Dublin with Florida State, and they'll say, no, no, simply all lies on the big prize right now. Yeah, they're saying the right thing. They're turning the page, worried about this year. It's a new season. If you look at Florida State, though, they're replacing a lot of talent. They lost 10 guys, 10 to the NFL draft, including the ACC Player of the Year, Jordan Travis, a quarterback. Good news, though, head coach Mike Norvell's been very busy again in the transfer portal. He's bringing in a lot of household names, guys like DJ Uyunglele, a quarterback from Oregon State, Clemson before that, and a lot of other really talented players, Joe, that I think are going to become household names here at Florida State this season. No question, Florida State believes they've got the talent, they've got the roster to compete for an ACC championship and a berth in the college football playoff in the new format, but they gotta start fast, and it starts here today. Conference game in Ireland against a very dangerous Georgia Tech team. Yeah, Yellow Jackets are tricky. Let's say good afternoon to Katie George. Katie. Well, guys, it's not often that somebody transfers to a title contender, becomes a starting quarterback, and then plays his first game with his new team internationally in Ireland. But that's the reality for DJ Uwe Ungalale. When he went on his official visit last December, Mike Norvell said the two of them sat down and watched three of DJ's old games, one of his best performances, one of his worst, and a game that went down to the wire. Norvell said he just wanted to talk through his reads, learn what DJ liked and didn't like his thought processes. And in doing so, he quickly believed DJ Uwe Ungale would make Florida State a better team. And in part, Florida State would make DJ Uwe Ungale a better quarterback. Today, we finally get to see that partnership in action, Tess. And Katie, we're gonna see him right away because Georgia Tech won the toss, they elected to defer. So Florida State will receive DJU 48 games deep into his college football career, Jesse. And he's got a lot of things that you just can't coach. You've seen that throughout his career. He's six foot five, 250 pounds. He's got a strong arm. He's unbelievably athletic for a guy his size as well. But he is playing his first game in a new offense. And he's going to be throwing to a lot of guys playing in their first game and this offense as well. So I think it's really important for DJU and Mike Norvell calling plays to help get him in a rhythm. The ninth major college football game ever played in Ireland. Jalen Lucas is a dangerous return man for Florida State. First team All-American when he was at Indiana where he had an IU record three kickoff return touchdowns. The big leg, Aiden Burr, will get this college football season underway. Here we go. A whole new look of college football as we will say hello to a familiar face in DJ Uwe Ungole with a 30 and 10 record as a starting quarterback. You know what he did as Clemson and then the refresh year at Oregon State and now leading the way for this loaded Florida State team. And Joe, I think for DJU, consistency has got to be key. That's been a bit of the MO throughout his career. He's been inconsistent at times. At times, looks like a first round pick. He makes wild throws. At other times, the mechanics fall apart. Accuracy and decision making is questionable. If they get a consistent version of DJU this year with the talent around him and how we expect them to play on defense, and no doubt, this is a playoff caliber team. Roy Dell Williams in the backfield with DJU. Jet motion. DJ will get it out to the flats to Williams, and Williams will turn the corner 
And have a first down for the Knowles, the transfer from Bama. And there's a really good example of play caller Mike Norvell getting DJU comfortable and in a rhythm. A little bootleg, get him outside the pocket, easy throw to the Alabama transfer, Roydell Williams. Again, you're just trying to get him comfortable and in a rhythm here to start the season. The way on away with the 12 yard pass to Williams. Lawrence Toafili, the other starting running back, comes into the game. He's in the slot to the right as Williams flanks Uyungle to his left. And here is Williams as he gets the block from Morlock and makes it out to the 45 yard line. Of course, one of the new additions to college football this year is the communication, the coach to player communication as Mike Norvell, the play caller, will talk it to the helmet communication, DJ Uyangale, up until 15 remains on the play clock. So all the days of the big signs and the multiple player signals likely over in the sport. Williams went for eight on first down, and now the jet motion with Lucas as Lucas Cuts back against the grain out to midfield. Jalen Lucas, the transfer from Indiana, they want to get him the ball in space. And I think Jalen Lucas can be one of the most exciting players on offense this year for Florida State. The transfer from Indiana was a guy that used to get put in space. Running back and wide receiver, they gave him jet sweeps. They handed it off to him. Anything to get him the ball out in the open field. He is so quick, Joe. Hard to tackle in a phone booth. He hits top speed about seven yards, and he's gone. First down at midfield for the Knowles. Holmes will take it straight ahead. Gain of maybe two and a half yards. Joe, I want to go back to what you were talking about with the coach quarterback communication. I think the biggest advantage outside of just getting the play call in faster is that coaches this year can give cues to their quarterback. They can coach a little bit extra. They could say, hey, if they play this coverage, mm -hmm. think about throwing to this guy. If they blitz, check to this. Remind the receiver to line up here. It's kind of like training wheels yeah. that you can give your quarterback each and every play to help him out. Williams and Lucas in the backfield. And second down and seven. And the Holmes went for a couple yards on the last carry. Big hole this time for Lucas as he spurts ahead to the 38-yard line, and it's another Florida State first down, tackled by Harvey. What's so impressive about Jalen Lucas is he's only 5'7", he's about 175 pounds, but he is not afraid to run between the tackles for a little guy. He gets upfield. Quick to the line, Uwe Ungle Straight ahead, running. Good job by that offensive line to surge for about 10 and a half yards. Looks like he's right at that line to gain. Oh, it's a really good call out, Joe. This is a very experienced Florida State offensive line. 210 combined starts between them, and their health is going to be a big key. When they just come off the ball, they are big and physical, and they get push and movement. You've seen a couple of examples, I think, from the Seminoles O-line early here in this game, trying to reestablish this line of scrimmage. Moving down the field easily on this opening series. Toafili, he breaks free. Lawrence Toafili, touchdown, no. The MVP of the ACC championship game with a 28-yard touchdown run to open up the season. The great blocking isn't just on the offensive line. Running backs helping running backs. Roydell Williams, the Bama transfer this time, gets out in front, gets a block on Clayton Powell Lee at safety. Great Swinging game. Swinging gate, and Brian Courtney takes it in. Florida State opens up the season with Alex Mastromano, the senior punter, lining up on the direct snip, taking the pitch to the left, 
as special teams coordinator John Papuchis, who always has something up his sleeve, opens up the season with that for the two-point conversion. Well, I think Florida State lined up in the swinging gate, and they were waiting to see how Georgia Tech was going to defend it. But Georgia Tech, they've got all their bodies in here. They're not adjusting and getting everybody out to the left side. So instead of shifting everybody back in, Mastromano just lines up. They flip it outside. And that could not have been a better start to the season if you're Florida State and Mike Norvell driving down the field and DJU's first series as a Seminole. And then you get the two-point conversion. John Papuchis, one of the great special teams coordinators in the game, comes up big. You know, I want to go back and look at that. I may correct myself and say that was the snapper who made the call with the direct snap over to that formation. Here's Leary on the return. And it was Mason Arnold. I want to go back, watch this play in the creativity as Mason Arnold takes the far angle snap. Look at that. And that's how they get it over to Courtney for the two-pointer. And that's what capped the drive. As there is a Georgia Tech player who is down in the return game at the 10-yard line, we will check on that. And with it, we will take a break. Eight, zip, Knowles as Trey Cooley is being tended to by the medical staff. The weather changes quickly here in Ireland. It went from a mild, beautiful, sunny afternoon to now this. A dirty looking sky and sheets of rain for Georgia Tech's first offensive possession of the year. With Haynes King, his second season at Georgia Tech after transferring in from Texas A&M. Jamal Haynes will get the carry. Cuts back against the grain and does so with a lot of success out to the 35-yard line before he's taken down by Joshua Farmer. A 14-yard run for Jamal Haynes. It was a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde year last year for Haynes King throwing the ball. Good news is he led the conference in touchdown passes, but he had the second most interceptions in the country. And I think throwing it in this game against a very fast secondary at Florida State, you cannot get greedy and force the football. They'll make you pay. Jet motion. This is Singleton. And Singleton takes it out for a gain of nine. Freshman All-American a year ago. Impact players are brought to you by Air Lingus, and what a defensive line Florida State reloads with Jesse. Well, it's a dominant unit, and it's amazing to think last year, you know, you lose Jared Verse and Braden Fisk, a first and second round pick, and still Florida State could have the best defensive line in the ACC. Joshua Farmer, Daryl Jackson, a transfer from Miami, Marvin Jones, a transfer from Georgia, and Patrick Payton. Seminole fans are very familiar with. These guys are big, athletic. They win a lot of one-on-ones. They'll focus in a lot on Jones and Peyton today. They do mark it as a first down. They get the ball quickly into space to Rutherford, and here he goes inside the 20 before he is taken down. That was Devontae Brown who ran him down, but Malik Rutherford with a big burst of a chunk play of 42 yards. Wow. Georgia Tech gets their big fellas out. Look at right tackle Jordan Williams getting out. Right guard Keelan Rutledge to transfer from Middle Tennessee into the second level. And they're pushing people around, springing Rutherford on the bubble screen. And just like that, Georgia Tech right down the field. Haynes looking for some room. Made one cut and wiggles his way inside the five. This Georgia Tech offense, sneaky good, Jesse. Well, you gotta love the way that Georgia Tech has been able to 
respond to that Florida State first drive. Your head coach, Brent Key, right now, it's starting to rain. You're getting into your element. You're running the football, which is something they did so well a season ago. You're seeing some toughness physically from Georgia Tech, but also a lot of mental toughness, seeing them respond on their first drive. Of the game. Coach Key's offense, four plays run, three first down. King. He gets it down to the one-yard line, Haynes King. Haynes King really is a dynamic quarterback and a true dual threat. He's a guy that can hurt you throwing the football, but he's very dangerous with his legs as well. And it's this area of the field down inside the 10-yard line is Haynes King now coming out of the game. And Zach Pyron, a backup quarterback, a little bit bigger, six foot three, 220 pounds, that they'll use in design QB run situations. Zach Pyron in the game. They use him basically as the big back. Direct snap, here he goes straight ahead and powers his way in. Let it rain, says Tech. Sting him, Yellow Jackets. Who's ready for ball this year? Man, oh man, we got a great start here in Dublin. They get a really nice block by center Weston Franklin. He's going to bang down on a D lineman and then chip up here and get DJ Lundy a piece of him at linebacker. And that really is what gives the space for Pyron to bust in for the touchdown. Aiden Burr puts it through. Tremendous way to respond by Georgia Tech. They didn't face a third down the whole way. Six plays, 79 yards. Pirate goes right in. An eight to seven game to open up the season early on. The Aer Lingus College Football Classic is brought to you by Aer Lingus and the new Fun 99 menu at Sonic. Live free, eat Sonic. That was the scene in Smithville Square in Dublin yesterday. Jess, we have been blown away. I mean, both fan bases. But the amount of Florida State fans that have come to Dublin. Well, I was going to say, there's been a total takeover this week in Dublin. We've been here about three days now, Joe. Everywhere we walk, we're seeing Florida State fans. We're seeing Georgia Tech fans. And a lot of locals here in Dublin also really, really excited about this game here today. A game that has started off with offensive firepower as both teams drive a piece, a touchdown each, and neither face a third down. We were talking earlier about DJU throughout his career being consistent. You've seen some really good. This last year at Oregon State, it's a play action bootleg, defender in his face, under duress, throws an absolute dart. It looks like a first round pick throw, but then later in the game, the exact same concept, defender in his face, tight end wide open in the flat. He decides to pass it up throws it downfield, and it's an incomplete pass, and it's a bad decision. We talked about if he's just able to be more consistent this season, play in, play out, they feel like they've got a lot of tools and a lot of pieces around him for this offense to be as successful as they were a year ago. Here is Lucas again getting work as he stays on his feet and is able to dart his way to the outside. So Jalen Lucas already having a presence in this offense. Joe, one of the things I was most excited in this game was to see one of the better offensive minds in college football, Mike Norvell, and how he was going to use Jalen Lucas. This really interesting tool. You've seen different ways. You've seen jet sweeps already in this game, lined up at running back, handing it off. That time he gets a reverse. I'll say it again. He could be the most exciting guy to watch when it's all said and done for Florida State this season. Second and seven. Uwe Youngway back to pass. A little bit of pressure as he steps up and is taken down at the 30-yard line by Joshua Robinson. Well, and this is critical for Georgia Tech on defense because a year ago, they only had 21 sacks. They were not good at getting after the quarterback. And this is an area they've got to be better at this season. You see some pressure coming off the right-hand side. It forces DJU to step up. They're able to take him down. Now here on what looks like an obvious passing situation, who can be the guy that can win one-on-one -on -one for George Tech? Who's the guy they can rely on to consistently get pressure? 
First third down faced by either team today. Third and five, DJU gets it complete as he's able to find Toa Feely, and Toa Feely still working his way all the way past midfield. Well, you saw Toa Feely on the touchdown run and what he could do from the running back position. How about now you line him up at wide receiver in the slot, just running a simple little drag over the middle of the field. Not the most accurate throw. That's a tough catch with the defender right behind him, but his ability and his speed, he really is a big weapon. Quick to the line. EJ gets it out a low throw to the 45-yard line, looking for Malik Benson. Malik Benson, the transfer from Alabama, who's considered the best athlete of this group, a very talented receiver. Well, I think receiver to me, Joe, that's the big question for Florida State this year on offense. You lose Keon Coleman, you lose Johnny Wilson to the NFL. Those guys were studs. So who can step up now? you got guys like Malik Benson in from Alabama. You've got Jalen Brown, a transfer from LSU. Who can be consistent in the passing game for DJU? Cam Davis, much talked about true freshman in the backfield. Tap pass to Douglas. Ja'Kai Douglas is able to get it just past the line to gain before Amari Harvey makes the tackle. But Ja'Kai Douglas, who we have seen for years, is really the old man of the group of Norville's first signing class. Take a look at some of the notable FSU transfers that came in. A lot of names from Alabama, Marvin Jones. Uh, great lineage there. Florida State fans will be very aware of because of who his father was. Devontae Brown at Miami and UCF before that. A lot of different positions. Mike Norvell, he went after to try and reload what was lost from last season. First down, Knowles. Here's Cam Davis, and he drops the pass. Cam Davis, who has been the eye-opening true freshman with the big builds, unable to hold on in the driving rain here in Dublin. Well, you just wonder if that's first game nerves, right? I mean, this is a guy who is highly, highly recruited, the number five ranked running back by ESPN coming out of high school. I know the ball is wet right now. That's just one that hits him in the face mask, and that's a catch that, that he needs to make. Mike Norvell's not going to quit on him. He's going to get more opportunities as this game goes on. He's a the guy they want to get lathered up and get going, because he is talented. Williams on second and ten. It's a good run fit that time. Just met in the hole by Kyle Eifert. So Georgia Tech brought in a new defensive coordinator from Duke, Tyler Santucci. His defense last year led the ACC, giving up only 19 points a game, but his big value is on third down. He's got a lot of exotic looks. He comes from the Mike Elko school of defense where they line different guys up in different places. Some guys have their hands down, others don't. They're trying to confuse the offensive line. They're trying to confuse the quarterback on these critical D and Ds. Third down and six. Here's Williams on the carry. A flag is down as he was taken down. And that was Romello Height who made the tackle. We will check on the flag. Jerry Magalanis leads this ACC crew. And will be holding against Florida State. Third straight year that this game has been the week zero college football opener. Mike Norvell's fifth season. Last year, led this team to a 13-0 mark as the ACC champs before the Orange Bowl. We all know what happened there. Holding offense, number 75. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. They got a holding uh, call that time on the right guard, Keandre Jones, trying to get a block on Kyle Eifert. I think, I think what Florida State was trying to do there was just run the ball, get more yards than that, and then go for it on four. They kind of feel like they're in four down territory, sort of no man's land right now. So Brent Key decides to decline the penalty. DJU still on the field. Ball at the 33-yard line, so sort of that middle ground no man's land. Trust your offense if you're feeling it, which is the case here on fourth and four. Empty look for DJ Uyunglele. 
Now Toafili will join him in the backfield. Fourth down and four. As he gets it to Toafili, but he is met right away. Great effort from Amari Harvey. It's a really good decision by DJU because there was a free blitzer. He was hot, and he went to his right target in Toafili, but it's a better tackle by Amari Harvey, the Auburn transfer cornerback in space. That's just a tackle you've got to make. Comes up with a huge stop. Georgia Tech's going to start with some pretty good field position, Joe. The Aer Lingus College Football Classic from here in Dublin. Oh, does it? No. Jesse, no. Wow. wow. Oh. Talk, talk man, about man. talent. I mean, that's the only Guinness I won't drink right there. Can we get one of those in the booth? Lots of room, Can lots we? of room right here. Two pints ASAP, let's go. Two hands. God, this broadcast will get sideways, won't it? Oh. Eight to seven here at Aviva Stadium. Good did that just look. Big stop moments ago from Georgia Tech's defense. Turnover on downs as Amari Harvey came up with the tackle. And now Haynes King back to business. Jamal Haynes on the carry, and he is driven back. Uh, this is going to be big for Florida State in this game. Last year, Georgia Tech led the ACC with 204 rushing yards a game. But right here, Daniel Lyons, a D tackle, able to get the push through and make the stop. And Blake Nicholson coming up as well. That's the first play of the game that goes for a loss, Jesse. Georgia Tech, obviously, with that last drive, scoring a touchdown in their opening drive. They only did that three times last year. That was the fewest in the ACC. So for your Brent, Brent Key here, I want to see them capitalize again. Here's Haynes out of the backfield. Tremendous pursuit down the line now from this Florida State defense. That was Conrad Hussey. And you're seeing the speed that Florida State has and their ability to go sideline to sideline. So now in this situation, third and long, if you're Georgia Tech, you have to identify where number 11, Patrick Payton, is going to line up on the defensive line. He is their alpha pass rusher, 6'5", 250 pounds. He's long. He's twitchy, and Georgia Tech does not want one tackle blocking him by himself on an island. This third down and 16. Haynes King looking for anything, but well corralled as he could only make his way out towards the 30-yard line. Azaria Thomas undercut him there. That is a big series for Adam Fuller's defense. I agree. You, that, that's what you want to see them coming back on the field and just sort of settling down a little bit. Obviously, their first drive, things did not go their way after the big bubble to Malik Rutherford and a three and out now after turning it over after that fourth down stop that Georgia Tech was able to get, setting themselves up in good field position themselves. Castle Island County carries very own David Shanahan punting here in his home country of Ireland as he puts it outside the numbers and it dribbles inside the 25-yard line. Week zero action is going to continue tonight. Well, the 10th annual FCS kickoff game at 7 on ESPN. North Alabama, Southeast Missouri State. And then Florida A&M and Norfolk State. Our celebration of HBCUs begins at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Isn't it great to simply have all that, Jesse? Yeah, stateside or not. Here in Dublin, there's just been a, a great energy all week. It's just, I think, anticipation, right, Joe? It's an exciting oh. new year, the new 12-team format, the college football playoff, but kicking it off here in beautiful Dublin. Just phenomenal. You got the new rules, you got the coach-to-player communications, you got the changing landscape with conference realignment, and of course, the 12-team college football playoff. As quickly to the outside is Morlock, as that'll be a first down for Florida State. Well, it's that play fake by DJU that's just sort of freezing the linebackers in the middle of the field from Georgia Tech, and that allows the tight end Morlock to get out in the flat for another easy completion that we haven't really seen DJU push it downfield yet, right, Joe? It's been no. a lot of short, easy throws, just trying to keep the offense in rhythm. Yeah, he's 7 of 8 for 62 yards, and the incompletion should have been caught by the freshman running back, Cam Davis. That goes for 12 yards. Final minute here for what's been an exciting first quarter. Williams. And bursting through and able to get to him was Butler, the true freshman linebacker. 
Butler does a great job reading his keys. That time the right guard and tight end pull. As soon as he sees that, he's shooting the gap. Big time play by a young player. I gotta be honest, this is a Georgia Tech defense that really struggled a year ago, Joe, but a new defensive coordinator, some new faces on that side of the ball, and they look like a unit just playing with a lot of confidence right now. Now welcome back college football as we come to the end of one. Toa Feely had the 28 yard touchdown. This is the end of the first quarter. Florida State went with a swinging gate two point conversion. Georgia Tech was able to respond with Pyron's touchdown run, and it's 8-7 from here in Dublin. Look at that view. Spectacular scene high above Dublin. Moments ago, Katie was with Brent Key. Brent, you said this game starts and ends at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the first quarter in the trenches? Yeah, I mean, I thought offensively the first uh, the first drive we had, we were able to establish the run, and you know, then we get knocked back there and get a TFL, and now you're behind the sticks, and then the other side of the ball, all right, we got to we got to we got to take a deep breath, all right. Play our assignment, get a line correctly, play our assimment, and finish with the ball carrier. You know, the majority of the big plays they've had have been bust by us. Uh, just small little adjustments we got to make in the scheme. So take a deep breath, settle down, and go play football. Thank you. All right. Toa Feely was driven back by Brent Key's defense that time. As Powell Lee and Kyle Efer converged on him. Yeah, it was another nice job by Powell Lee at safety playing downhill, now setting up third in California, really. And again, an area last year where Georgia Tech really struggled in these situations was getting pressure on the quarterback and trying to disrupt their rhythm. And we talked about Tyler Santucci, the new D coordinator. He's got a lot of different funky looks. You see a lot of people at the line of scrimmage. Some have their hands down, some don't. DJU's got to be careful here. Third and 15 locally is referred to as third and Limerick. Pressure and taken down. That was Romello Height as a penalty marker comes in at the end of that play, but that is exactly the elite talent they want to see off the edge from Height. He's a transfer from USC. Foul. He's the guy. Face mask, defense, number nine. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And it's going to go the other way as a first down Florida State with the face mask. Wow, I was just going to say, he's the guy that they think can be the dude coming off the edge. He beats Robert Scott one-on-one -on -one and gets home. But you see, in the process, gets a hold of DJU's face mask. It looked like an incredible play for Georgia Tech. Just no luck of the Irish there. That would have been the first sack of the day for them in their third straight TFL. Instead, just getting a little bit of the face mask, and it's first down, Florida State out at the 47-yard line. Williams shifts back into the backfield. Play action. Pressure again on Uyunglele, but he dumps it to Williams as Williams maintains his balance down the sideline. And what a big play by the transfer from Bama, Roy Dell Williams. Well, the screen game really is a big part of Mike Norvell's offense. And that time, really good patience by Roy Dell Williams, selling like it's going to be passed. It's looking like it's a play action. He's going to pass block. He's able to let those D linemen get up the field and behind him. And then out in the open field, just good, strong running down the sideline. Tyler Santucci, defensive coordinator, upset. Tay Seymour with the missed tackle. Jay gets it out quickly. This is Jalen Brown, who's tied up right away. Jalen Brown, the transfer from LSU. See Biggers getting out in space to make the tackle. Well, I think one of the best recruiting jobs that Brent Key had at head coach was bringing in that guy right there. It's not just high school talent, people out of the portal. A lot of people thought Tyler Santucci was going to follow Mike Elko from Duke over to Texas A&M. Brent Key convinced him to come be his defensive coordinator. And that really could be the defense, Joe, a big piece to the puzzle this year. Last year, their offense was prolific. Defensively, though, they struggled. If they can just get marginally better, they believe they can compete for a conference title. Santucci was a nominee for the Broyles Award a year ago. Second down and eight. Here's Holmes. Holmes tries to catch that scene, but it's taken down just around the 31 yard line. It'll be third down from there. Robinson with another tackle. Well, we heard Brent Key telling Katie 
coming out of the break. The negative plays are kind of what got them in trouble offensively on that last drive. Now on defense, a few minutes ago, you had third and long. It looks like you're going to get a sack, but you get the face mask. Instead, it keeps the drive alive. And because of that, Florida State here knocking on the door. Third down and two. DJU taken down. That was a big time play again from Harvey. Remember, he had the fourth down stop earlier for Santucci's defense. Well, he had some offensive linemen slipping and sliding. The big key against the 250 pound quarterback is you don't want to let him get going downhill. And that time, Georgia Tech able to stymie him up front. And a really good job inside there by Amari Harvey. We saw him make a great open field tackle on the last possession, that time making a big stop in the backfield. And now the field goal attempt for Ryan Fitzgerald. He scored 115 points last year. This a 52-yard attempt from Fitzgerald. And he's able to drill it. A career long for Fitzgerald. A 52-yard field goal to make it 11 to 7. The big leg, well struck, good rotation, and in from 52 out. Knowles on top by four. Joe Tessitore, Jesse Palmer, Katie George with you here on what has been a beautiful week in Dublin. Some of the great scenes as we've been flying high above Aviva Stadium, not far away from that Temple Bar area. Let's dig in on the Georgia Tech offense. Uh, one of the things I love about them, Joe, is lots of misdirection, a lot of eye candy. You see jet motions a lot, running backs going a certain way. Here against Syracuse, it clears out three defenders in the middle of the field and a big hole for Haynes King to run through, but they do it in the passing game as well. Later in the game, running back into the boundary on a swing route. It captures the eyes of the corner for just a split second. That allows Haynes King to go up top for the touchdown on the post. All this misdirection and pre-snap shifts and motions, it forces defenses to have to play with great eye discipline. You've got to find the football. If you don't, it gets run right by you. It gets thrown over your head. I think that's a big challenge for this Florida State defense throughout this game. Ryan Fitzgerald just hit the 52-yarder as he kicks away here. And Christian Leary will not get an opportunity on the return. Georgia Tech offense, they were committed to the run, productive with the run, rushing the ball, but the defense was given up a lot, thus the new coaches. Well, and I think that's why they're excited about this season is because from the offense, 83% of that production comes back. They feel like they can take the next step offensively yes. in the second year under offensive coordinator and play caller Buster Faulkner's system. You see Buster Faulkner there. He's on the left-hand side. A really, really clever offensive mind. And you know, it's going to be important throughout the course of this game against the athleticism they're facing that they're able to keep using this misdirection to put Florida State on their heels. Buster, of course, a two-time national champion on that Georgia staff. Haynes King. As Singleton was the intended target. This schedule from Georgia Tech, Joe, I mean, it's it's the toughest in the ACC. It's ridiculous. You got 11 teams on the schedule that were in bowl games a year ago. Non-conference, they're playing Notre Dame in Georgia. And they have so many games away from Bobby Dodd Stadium. I mean, they've got their work cut out for them. Second and 10, this is Haynes as Haynes is bottled up at the 29-yard line. So this is, this is a big situation here for Haynes King and Georgia Tech. An area I don't think they were very good at a year ago is just drop back passing. Without the play action, when the defense knew they were going to throw it, accuracy not always great from Haynes King. Decision making not only always great. Receivers, the ability to separate wasn't always there. They have got to be better in that department. And here's a perfect example here in this down and distance. Third down and five for Haynes King. Shallow cross, gets it complete, has the first down to Chase Lane. And, and I love that from Haynes King, getting through his progression. First receiver not there out of the backfield. You find Chase Lane transfer from AM on the shallow cross. So a 
first down. Out to the 42. There's Haynes testing that left side as he's tackled by Thomas. Well, Tess, just not sure if you guys noticed, Haynes Kings keeps bringing his hands up to his ears on his helmet. They were curious to see how the in-helmet communication would hold up in crowd noise. It's been a little bit loud here at Aviva Stadium. It's a bit jarring for quarterbacks, they say. Having somebody in their ear relaying a play call while also trying to talk to their teammates at the exact same time. But just as you know, the more reps with anything, the better you get at it. Yeah, no doubt about it. I remember when, when I made the transition from Florida to the NFL, it was something that took a lot of getting used to. Someone talking to you in your ear while at the same time you're trying to communicate with your own teammates. Alexander on second and four. Good run as he is finally torn down at about the 36-yard line by Shaheen Brown. But Chad Alexander, the walk-on, was mostly travel roster special teams guy a year ago with a big run here of 17 yards. Able to get a big block by the left guard, Fusel going out and kicking out Omar Graham. The thing I love about this rushing attack from Georgia Tech, Joe, they've got so much volume. It's zone, it's power, it's counter, it's jet sweeps, it's quarterback runs. There's a lot for Florida State defensively to have to prepare for in this game. Nice job by Jackson Hawes there, the big tight end to clear the way. First down pass attempt, King going deep. Overthrows the intended target, Singleton, and he was open. And that is one Haynes King is going to want to wish he had back. I think Singleton is a superstar in the making. That time in a tight split, was running the corner out, and he had complete separation, wide open, going to the corner, and that has got to be a touchdown. We talked about the inconsistency from Georgia Tech a year ago in the drop back passing game. Those are just plays you've got to be able to make. Second and 10, design quarterback run. Here's King as he gets to the outside, inside the 30 and lowers the shoulder with a lot of rah-rah from the near sideline to get the extra yardage. That's the thing, Joe, about Haynes King, right? At 215 pounds, he's actually a pretty physical runner. When you watch him on film, oftentimes he's falling forward. He's not sliding, he's not running out of bounds. He's taking guys on, that time Azari A. Thomas putting his shoulder down and getting extra yards. And a good job again from the transfer tight end, Jackson Hawes, as he got that seal on the outside. He's had a couple key blocks early on here. This rushing attack from Georgia Tech, picking right back up. See the ACC ranks a year ago. 12 yards there for King. There's Jackson Hawes, transfer from Yale, played for Tony Reno up in New Haven. Alexander now testing the right side, spins free! and then is wrestled down eventually by Shaheen Brown. I'll tell you, Joe, I'm impressed. The right side of that Georgia Tech offensive line, a lot of white jerseys getting pushed, and it wasn't until about four or five yards downfield that anybody at Florida State even touched Alexander that time. A nice, strong running, getting the spin. They're not going to wrap him up. Georgia Tech on the march. This rushing attack, prolific from a year ago right now. You're seeing all the different variety they have and the different ways and the different people that can carry the football. Defensive coordinator Adam Fuller trying to deal with this Georgia Tech attack. Second and three, Haynes. As Haynes King able to scoop his way to the 13-yard line, and that is a first down for Georgia Tech. It's a really good read by Haynes King because it's basically a run-run option. He's faking the handoff inside, and he's allowing the defensive end that time, Sione Lolohea, to crash down. Once he does that, he's off to the races. And again, you see how strong of a runner Haynes King is. Not an easy guy to bring down. First down at the 14-yard line. Jamal Haynes, he is met just inside the 10-yard line. This is going to be the 11th play of the drive for Georgia Tech. So DJ Uyunglele <laughs> says, you know, I got I to gotta stay warm. I got to stay warm out here. It is Dublin summer. I get it. But it is in the low 60s, maybe high 50s at this point. It is starting to get a little bit chilly. It's been a minute since he's been on the field. Dublin summer, better known as New York November. All of a sudden, the sun comes out. Just give it five minutes, and we'll see what we get next. 
Second and six. Haynes King patiently waiting and now muscling his way inside the five yard line. And that should be, yes, first and goal, Yellow Jackets. Wow, you can't say enough how impressed I am. Georgia Tech's offensive line, it was so good a year ago, but their physicality and that time the transfer, Keelan Rutledge, Middle Tennessee at guard, getting a kick out block against Patrick Payton and then clearing the way for Haynes King. This is an area of the field inside the five yard line, these QB runs and these design runs. You've got to be alert for that if you're Florida State. Alexander in the backfield with King. First and goal. Alexander is stacked up in the middle. It's amazing, too, because, Joe, I'm up here and I'm watching Haynes King. He's got his hands on his, on his hips. Yes. He's carrying it a lot. He's already had five carries. He's had a scramble. We asked head coach Brent Key, I mean, how many carries do you want to give this guy? How comfortable are you? And it's just like as many as it takes to win. They, they knew coming into this game against this defense that it obviously be Jamal Haynes carrying it a lot, but Haynes King, a quarterback, was going to have to get it done as well. And, and <laughs> we're putting him to work here early in the first half. It's averaging 6.4 a carry. It is Jamal Haynes who's in the backfield with him here on second and goal. And that time, Haynes King kept it himself and got to the one-yard line. Third and goal. Well, last time they were in this situation in the first quarter, they brought in Zach Pyron, the bigger quarterback. Looks like that's what they're, they're maybe getting ready to do again. He's running over to Brent Keyes, asking if I'm going in. Looks like there was a little bit of a an issue with that last handoff, Joe. Uh, he got you know, mesh. I mean, the, the mesh with the read, and then he decides I'm going to pull, but it was a little late. And now we've got a third and goal. And they do not bring in Pyron, who had the touchdown run. Instead, it's Jamal Haynes as the running back, Haynes King as the quarterback. Third and goal. Pushing ahead, and it's a touchdown, Georgia Tech. Jamal Haynes with the one-yard touchdown run as Georgia Tech takes their first lead of the game. Well, that felt like it took all 10 guys from Georgia Tech up front. You saw multiple linemen, you saw tight ends. Even Haynes King, the quarterback, gets in there. Look at him coming from the right side of the screen, number 10 right there, just trying to lower his right shoulder in to help out his running back to push him across the line of scrimmage. Impressive, impressive drive by Georgia Tech, showing a ton of physicality and creativity in that running game. Jess, you talk about an impressive drive. And we took that shot of DJU over on the sidelines, just waiting his turn, right? That was wow. 14 plays. Wow. It took seven minutes and 53 seconds, eating yards, eating clock, and taking the lead as Aiden Berg gives them a three-point margin with just over three minutes to play before halftime. Georgia Tech on top of the number 10 Knowles, thanks to Jamal Haynes. The Aer Lingus College Football Classic is brought to you by Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? 2024 Aer Lingus College Football Classic from Aviva Stadium, not far from this spectacular look at Trinity College. Goes all the way back to 1592. And of course, Number houses seven, the of Book Georgia. of Kells, the famed Book of Kells, the Celtic Gospel in Latin. And this is the scene here high above Aviva Stadium where Georgia Tech and this offense has been doing their thing with all the variety to get a 14-11 lead on this top 10 Florida State team. So glad you're with us to start the college football season. Joe Tessitore, Jesse Palmer, Katie George, the new look of the sport. The 12-team playoff has arrived. And then, of course, we will head into our ESPN ABC College Football next week, Thursday night. You got North Dakota State, Colorado on ESPN. Temple and Oklahoma Friday on ESPN. Saturday, how about this triple header? Clemson, Georgia on ABC. Miami and Florida, the first SEC on ABC 330 game. 
And then in prime time, Notre Dame at Texas A&M, all before we get to Sunday in Vegas with USC and LSU. It's just wall to wall. I mean, just Appointment viewing. Do not leave your couch. Two of us are going to be in Gainesville for that battle between tremendously loaded Miami team and a Florida team that feels much more confident entering this year. Louis Ungole finding Toafili out of the backfield. He tries to turn the corner and he's able to dart ahead well, to the 27. Listen, obviously Florida State wants to score here at the end of the half, but they, they cannot go three and out right now, Joe. After their defense was just on the field for almost eight minutes, they need a breather. And it's important that Florida State here is able to matriculate the ball down the field. Georgia Tech is going to be receiving first in the second half, so this is a big drive here for the Seminoles. See how good that Georgia Tech defense has been the last couple drives. Toa Feely, as he is taken down at the 28-29 yard line by LaMiles Brooks, who's right. really improved. And here comes a big substitution now for Georgia Tech in third down, obvious pass situation. Last time in the situation, it was Romello Height, the transfer from USC, that got the sack. Unfortunately, also got the face mask penalty, but kept the drive alive. But up front now, it's a very experienced O-line for Florida State. They've got to keep DJU clean. Looks like Florida State has two players now lined up opposite Romello Height to the right side of the formation. That's who they have to deal with. The most talented edge rusher for the Yellow Jackets. Third down and seven. Pressure on DJU. He gets away. Tries to go ahead to get that big body to that line again. And he's very close. It'll depend on the spot. It was Sylvain young Jewin who was able to get to him. As a man is down, Romello Height had the first pressure. And another new part of college football this year, the two-minute timeout. It has arrived, the first ever in major college football. Up on the Alexis Halftime Report, it's a season of change in college football. We'll talk about the ACC additions, who can have immediate success, plus the 12-team college football playoff is here. We'll explain it. Don't yell at us yet. An immediate impact quarterback transfers. We'll talk about those, plus the number of Jamison shots Joe Tess and Jess had last night. Ireland, big numbers coming up at the half. Was there a tally on that, Jess? Uh, Nobody's keeping it. Uh, after a certain, a certain amount, you just kind of lose count. Look forward to hearing from Matt and Sam at the half. First down for Florida State. DJ Ungole quickly to the outside, connecting with Malik Benson. Real fast, physical, good set of hands as well. Saw him at Alabama. Didn't quite blossom in quickly at Alabama to what we thought he would be. No, and, and listen, looking at Florida State in this game so far, Joe, offensively, they ran the ball so well on that first drive. As you see, the last two drives, though, it's been tough sledding. you got to give credit to Georgia Tech up front for shutting that down. That's important here, though, because they still have three timeouts in their back pocket in this two-minute situation, which means run plays are still very, very alive for them, but they've got to do a better job executing and getting the blocks. Second down and four. Williams will take it straight ahead. An extra push for Williams, and that should give him the mark for the first down. The clock's going to stop inside two minutes when you get a first down to give them an opportunity, but they got to get the play call in here. Florida State got to have a little sense of urgency now. Under a minute to go. Get the play call made again. Remember, brand new quarterback, new offense, new terminology, new communication, new teammates. This is something they've obviously repped in practice, but you can't simulate what it's like in a game. Clock re-engages once that ball is set. And here is DJ Ui Ungale with time. Shot downfield and thrown to the outside of Lawrence Toafili. But the flag reigns in at the 18-yard line as LaMiles Brooks had coverage. And that time, they lined up Toa Feely, a really running back. Defense, it was like in a split tight end spot. Penalty, automatic first down. And he's showing you the incredible versatility. Stretching the field, they had him one-on-one -on -one with LaMiles Brooks. Never turns around to locate the football, and oftentimes that's an indicator for referees throw P.I. Now, my question on that play, Joe, is was the ball even catchable? 
If it's not catchable, then it's not supposed to be P.I. I don't think either player that time located it knew where it was. Williams and Lucas in the backfield. Louis Young away, extending the play. Flags rain in as he goes downfield, tried to go back shoulder downfield as he was looking to try to connect with Jalen Lucas, but they're going to walk this back. Yeah, they're going to get a hold on Jeremiah Byers at right tackle that time, who just got bull rushed on the right side of the offensive line. I've been impressed. Georgia Tech's pass rush already looks way better than it was a year ago. There are two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Holding offense number 63 is declined. Holding offense number 76 is accepted. 10-yard penalty, first down. First Florida State penalty of the game. Well, the problem with Florida State in that penalty is that you've got one of the best kickers in yes. the country in Ryan Fitzgerald. What did he kick, Joe, earlier? 52-yard field goal, career high. So you're now knocking yourself out of field goal range. And what's a three-point game? Just can't have those mental mistakes. Three seconds remain quickly to the outside to Brown as Brown spins his way to the 41 yard line. Right away, Florida State calls a timeout. Mike Norvell went sprinting onto the field to make sure that got communicated. But it's a nice job getting some of that lost yardage back. Time out. themselves back closer Florida to field State. goal range. We'll see how it plays half. out in these final 15 Full seconds after a short break and then a return here from magnificent Dublin, Ireland. Ryan Fitzgerald hit a 52-yard field goal earlier in this game. And right now, Florida State is trying to put him in position again with 15 seconds remaining and two timeouts with the ball in the 40-yard line. So I think at this point, Joe, you're, you're thinking to yourself, OK, if we get to the 35-yard line, we're within his range. We've got two timeouts. We can throw it over the middle of the field. We can run the ball if we need to. Really, Mike Norvell is a play caller, has it all at his disposal. Two timeouts, second and 10. Plenty of real estate and time to work with because of the timeouts. Uyungle looking for an option. And that ball was thrown to the outside of Ja'Kai Douglas. So that'll leave nine seconds remaining. It's hard throwing it downfield with this situation because Georgia Tech's just rushing three guys. They've got eight back in coverage. Everyone's eyes on the quarterback. Not letting anything get behind them. And they're going to break on the ball. This is the second incompletion for Uwe Ungole today in shortstop. 12 completions for 96 yards. See how they manage these last nine seconds with the timeouts in the bag. To Afili. He is tracked down. That was well defended by Tay Seymour. That time, Micaiah Scott, big 290 pounder who normally plays defensive tackle, they had him at defensive end. He completely stonewalled the, the pulling offensive over. lineman for Florida State. And that's what forced down, the running back to have to Lord bounce State it outside. They'll second. clean up the clock timeout situation the here with the timeout. Timeout, Florida State, 30 second timeout. As Fitzgerald will come on the field, and this is going to be a bomb of an attempt. Wow. What do you got, 58, 59? Was, yeah, well, right now, based on where the holder is going to mark it, and that's Mastromano, the veteran punter. I think he's going to put his knee down. 49. For what will be a 59-yard wow. attempt. He hit from 52 earlier. Wow. Now, going in this direction, this is a unique stadium where the wind typically goes in this direction. He's kicking because of the lower shielding to the left side, and then the big frame, you see how it dips down there, so the wind tends to come off of that and aid in this direction. We will see. It's a 59-yard attempt by Fitzgerald to tie the game. And Georgia Tech is going to call timeout. a timeout. Georgia Tech, their first timeout of the half, 30-second timeout. 
Fitzgerald had a field goal percentage of 90.5% a year ago, his seventh best in the nation. We told you earlier today, he just went after it. And what I love about how he hit this 52 yarder, Jesse, is he did not change his form. That's his normal kick. He's got his normal fall through and elevation. It's, not like, a, low it's ball, like a golf swing iron. though, right? Just good tempo going good tempo. through it. Just, just let the let the toe do the work. Was that you this week out at, uh, at you know, We'll get to that a little okay. bit later. Time from time and time again. Get yes. some Irish golfing. But this is interesting. You know, it's for Fitzgerald. Again, one of the best in the country. You're noticing here, Georgia Tech's not going to be able to call another timeout. That's a new rule change that was implemented last season in terms of icing the kicker. 59-yard attempt to tie the game at the half by Fitzgerald. Yeah. And why not? A 59-yard field goal from Ryan Fitzgerald. If there's anybody from the English Premier League watching this game, he, he might get signed. It's going to be a Liverpool, a Chelsea, a Man U signage happening after the first half. <laughs> it's Gerald Fan. That was an absolute bomb. So well struck. Great minor correction by Mastromano. Big boot by. Line tons of credit, Joe. Because they really are enforcing themselves up up front. We got to share the love. It's like here. a good stout beer. Black up. Where's Jim Foley on camera too? My man, you gotta have some. Come on, opening week not, here. Not, week zero. Get giving, after I'm it, my man. Get up, after no. it. Camera two is gonna have a great second half. As Georgia Tech will open up with the ball. Katie. You guys are a mess. I hope you guys realize you're both a mess up there. I talked to Mike Norvell coming out of halftime. He said on defense, they got to get guys wrapped up. He said they've missed a lot of tackles in open space. That's extended these drives. He did said Haynes King is doing a really nice job in the run game. So when the opportunity presents itself, they got to get him down quicker in the second half, guys. That's a good point, Katie. I think that the physicality and the toughness of this Florida State front seven is going to get tested. We talked earlier about losing Jared Verse, losing, losing Braden Fisk in the first two rounds of the draft. They also lost four of their five top defensive tackles from a year ago. Now, they believe they've been able to reload and bring in guys through the portal and out of high school, but that has to show up now in the second half. Jamal Haynes breaks a tackle, gets free. Here goes Haynes. Pass midfield, perfect way to start the second half for the Yellow Jackets. This time Florida State trying to bring a little bit of pressure off the edge with Shahi Brown, their safety, and DJ Lundy, a linebacker, he gets blocked. There's a pulling lineman up front. Jordan Brown, the transfer from Charlotte, gets a hat on a hat, and that springs the converted wide receiver, Jamal Haynes, into the secondary, and he shows you the speed. 36 yards for Haynes. And his story is something special. Now here's Haynes King on a signed quarterback run as he's taken down at the 35-yard line by Thomas. Let's get back to Jamal Haynes because this is guy comes here as a slot receiver at Georgia Tech. Plays only 11 games prior to last year. Never caught a pass, never had a carry, and then has the breakout season as a running back. You know what's crazy about him is that he's only 190 pounds, yet he gets upfield. Normally, smaller running backs like to use their speed and bounce it to the outside. He is so comfortable running between the tackles. And look at that number, 174. That's the most carries a Georgia Tech running back has had since 2017. He can tote the rock, workload, you can feed him, he gets better as the game goes on and as the season goes on. Second and six, Haynes King, and he is taken down by Shaheen Brown. And I just wonder, you know, as this game goes on, as Georgia Tech keeps running the football, Adam Fuller, the D coordinator for Florida State, is going to have to make a decision. Do I have to put extra safeties in the box and get guys closer to the line of scrimmage to try and take this away? Very nearly a face mask there for Florida State. Shaheen Brown at safety making the tackle. Very, very lucky. Third down and five. After that big run by Jamal Haynes, they get in position. What will they do with it? Haynes King with time. Crossing route. 
and it's incomplete as he was trying to get it to Malik Rutherford. The coverage came from Kevin Knowles. Nice job by Kevin Knowles there. He's replacing Jerry and Jones, who was outstanding last year in the nickel. Really good job in man coverage at that point. Now forcing a field goal attempt, it looks like here for Georgia Tech. Aiden Burr's gonna come on, very talented kicker, was an honorable mention freshman All-America a year ago. Had the second highest field goal percentage in Georgia Tech in single season history. He's got a big leg. This from 51. And it is no good. So Haynes had the big run that put them in position, but they couldn't cash in and we're still tied at 14 apiece early second half. Boy, a lot of the fans who came to see the Aer Lingus College Football Classic, they got to tourism Ireland with their golf guide. I mean, look at some of these spots here on the island. Like La Hinch out there in County Clare. You want the best oysters in the world, by the way. County Clare's got facts. Waterville, but then the best of all, where the Ryder Cup is going to be in 2027, Adair Manor. It is utterly spectacular. We were there to check out Adair Manor, checking out a heck of a game with the Knowles and Georgia Tech. DJ Bui Ungale spinning and trying to go against the grain, and that was deflected. And some had a fun time at the great Adair Manor, where the cup will be in a few years. Yeah, Katie and I had a chance to play that earlier this week. The course oh. is absolutely pristine. And Katie and I had the two best caddies ever, PJ and Paul. And they were telling us exactly what to do. And Katie and I made it seem as if we didn't hear a word they said. I don't know if PJ will ever show up to work again after having to carry me through 18. Let's be honest, Jess. We asked him what we owed him after the round, and he said, an apology. <laughs> Second and 10. Williams trying to find anything he can. But we can count there was Omar Daniels and Tatum. Well, at, at this point, Joe, in the passing game for Florida State, everything's been short and underneath, and at some point, you got to push it downfield, don't you? I mean, running backs have more receiving yards right now than their wide receivers. So in this third and long situation, Ja'Kai Douglas out there, Darian Williamson, Malik Benson, someone's got to win one-on-one, -on -one, get to the sticks, and they've got to get the vertical passing game going. Third down and seven. Williams remains the back flanking Uwe Ungole. It's a motion Williamson. DJ with time, gets it out, and gets it complete. Out past mid, they're saying incomplete. That's a kind Douglas was out of bounds. Boy, that was close, but it's an incompletion as Harvey had coverage on Ja'Kai Douglas. That was an absolute perfect throw to the back shoulder by DJU there, working Douglas on the sideline. The question was, did he get his right foot down? And this is one that I think they need to take another look at. The right toe. So cool. I know, listen, I saw it in real time and called it a catch, but they uh, said incomplete. Let's see if it, that's the case. Let's bring in Matt Austin, our rules expert. Matt, what do you see? Yeah, thanks, Joe. I think this is a catch. I think he had firm control. I think he definitely got that right toe down, stepped out of bounds, went to the ground, maintained control. I think this is going to be a catch. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was incomplete. I agree with you, Joe. Watching it live, I thought it was a catch as well. The first instance of Florida State actually having some success throwing it downfield. Jess, how about the body control? Well, it was pretty amazing. I guess, like, I'm looking back at this and I'm trying to see where's the spot. Is there a point in this replay where conclusively you can tell that that right toe is down in bounds? From that angle, to me, it looks like it's down in bounds. Kind of gets blocked by the defender's foot. And then, you're, of course, you're also looking for control of the ball. You have to, it has to be complete and continuous all the way through the catch. Ja'Kai Douglas on third and seven. At the end of that play, that was ruled incomplete. You heard from Matt Austin, you heard from Jesse. They're taking a look. And they feel it should be reversed and a catch and a first down. If it stands, it'll be the first three and out for Florida State, the first punt of the day for them. Review. 
The receiver completed the catch at the 48-yard line. It's first and 10 at the 48-yard line, Florida State. You know, and, and in that moment, Florida State on a big third down, they go to Ja'Kai Douglas, a fifth-year senior, and a guy really that's done it all for this Florida State offense. Last year in a game against Pitt, when Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson were out with injury, he went over for 100 yards. We saw him in the Orange Bowl against Georgia, Joe. Yes. He was playing Wildcat quarterback, running back, receiver. He'll do anything it takes for this offense to have success. So in a big moment, you go to the experienced wide receiver to make a play. Also had a big fourth down conversion catch for Florida State when they were trailing Florida in that critical game. So 15 yards to Douglas. First down, Knowles. J. Uwe Ungle with time off play action goes downfield. Wow. And that's incomplete. It was thrown a little low for Ja'Kai Douglas. He had him on the deep cross, and if that ball is just thrown a little bit higher and out in front, that might be a walk-in touchdown. It's a tremendous effort by Douglas going low to the ground and trying to scoop that up. That just has to be a more accurate throw from DJU. We talked about the inconsistency throughout his four-year career, Joe. Throws like that, you just have to be able to make to have success. Feely on second down, he tries to cut back against the grain, gets the ball out inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. I gotta say, I am impressed with Georgia Tech's defense in this game. And under Tyler Santucci, their first year defensive coordinator, they just look like they're getting lined up, they're communicating. The guys are playing their assignments, they're never out of position, and that was a problem a year ago. But you gotta remember, this is everybody's first game in this new system defensively as well, but they're communicating into the green dot. That's linebacker Kyle Eford. He also has the microphone and the headset in his helmet, and he's doing a really nice job getting everybody lined up. Coach to player communication changes the landscape of the sport this year. JU, third down, that was thrown to the outside. Williamson was well covered. But another really good example of these third down exotic looks that Tyler Santucci has become known for. And he changes it up throughout the course of the game. He doesn't show you the same sub package at the line of scrimmage. New players, new alignments, constantly keeping you on your heels. It's very, very difficult to prepare for defenses that have so many different looks on third down the way Georgia Tech now does. So Mastromano on to try to pin Georgia Tech as Shelley will set up shop just around the 10 yard line. into the end zone. So what's new in 2024? Well, the biggest of all, we finally have the new 12-team college football playoff where the four conference champions will take those valued first four seeds and you get a bye, one through four. You gotta be a conference champion for that. Then teams five through 12 will play in what is the first round on campus starting on December 20th. Five conference champions get in the next seven highest rank. So if you took the current rankings going into the season, this is strangely what it would look like. Glad to have it, but I think a lot of people will be saying, now why would Utah, with a 12 next to their name, get the four seed? The aforementioned, you have to be a conference champion to get one of the top four seeds. Well, what I think is big here too, Joe, is those first round games, the higher ranked team gets home field advantage. Yes. Those aren't neutral site games. So a lot of changes. It's going to be really interesting to see how it shakes out. Jamal Haynes taken down immediately as DJ Lundy darts in. DJ Lundy is a leader, and he was part of a three-man rotation at linebacker in a position that was really a strength for the Seminoles last season. But he just sees the key, and as soon as he sees this hole open, he sees guards pulling. He's now playing downhill. They lost him in the portal to Colorado in the offseason, Joe. He decided to come back to Florida State, and that was a big get for Adam Fuller and Mike Norvell, because he is one of the team's best leaders. And he is the green dot player, so he is the player as that goal is incomplete with the pressure coming in from Joshua Farmer. Lundy's that green dot player who has the defensive coordinator, Adam Fuller, in his ear. Good pressure that time 
on second down by Joshua Farmer. Third and 12. Yeah, and Patrick Payton, the blue light for Florida State. This is a place that he has to come alive. He is the most dynamic pass rusher that Florida State has. And right now, normally lining up to the far left side, up over top of a tight end. Is Georgia Tech going to help with him? Right now, they have the tight end to his side. They've got the running back to his side. And obviously, the right tackle there as well. You would think we're at Dope Campbell listening to this crowd here at Aviva Stadium in Dublin. Third down and 12. Haynes King with time. Receiver went down. Ball went to the ground as he was looking for Rutherford. Incomplete. And the Florida State defense and does their job. And that's just Rutherford falling down. And we've seen a couple of players. You know, it rained earlier in the game. The grass is getting a little slick. But this was wide open, Joe. We used to call this a fork route. The University of Florida from the slot just running to the corner. It breaks wide open. There's a clearance from the outside receiver. That's a good look and a good throw from Haynes King. And Rutherford knows. Big missed opportunity. The Irish native David Shanahan looking to flip the field. Malik Benson back to return for Florida State. They came after Shanahan. May have gotten a piece of it as it flutters down. That was an awkward punt. Benson fields it. Off the bounce as he tries to get out and get to the 36-yard line. So David Shanahan, who comes from County Ferry, Ireland, from Southwest Ireland, grew up playing Gaelic football, hunting for Georgia Tech. We will take a break. Still tied at 14-14. Tech tied up here. The Air Lingus College Football Classic as you're watching the ACC on ESPN and Katie, a rare local connection in this game. Well, Tess, you mentioned David Shanahan grew up playing Gaelic football in his hometown, Castle Island, three and a half hours from Dublin. Gaelic football is more similar to rugby or soccer, but when Shanahan was 16, he ordered a couple American footballs off Amazon and secretly practiced punting them in the early hours of the morning at a local field before the town would wake up. He was worried the community would question him playing an American sport. Turns out he's pretty good at it. Secret punting sessions. I gotta be like, I'm, like, I'm so shocked that more Irish kids aren't converting over and playing American football based on the popularity of rugby and Gaelic football here. But certainly this kid's paving the way. First down for Florida State. Cam Davis and Roydell Williams in the backfield with Uwe Ungle away. This is Williams. And Katie, it's a pretty interesting path that Shanahan has taken, isn't it? Oh, it's such a journey. I mean, Shanahan decided to attend Pro Kick football in Australia, the first Irishman to do so. He graduated from Pro Kick, went home as COVID hit. Georgia Tech then offered him a scholarship. To get to the States during COVID, he had to enter in from Serbia. He went straight to Salt Lake City for six months to train before finally arriving in Atlanta. Four years later, he's back in his home country playing in front of 50 family members and friends. Pretty cool, guys. It really is. I mean, what are the odds? There's Williams. Williams tries to get that extra effort, makes it to the 45-yard line. The third down from there, Tatum with the tackle. Man, you're seeing Kyle Eifert, too, a middle linebacker. He's flying around for Georgia Tech. Led the team in tackles last year as a freshman. Took over midway through the season. He might not be the most athletic linebacker in the country, but man, he's just sound. Stays in his gaps, finds the ball, and he doesn't miss tackles. He's really the heart and soul of this Yellow Jacket defense, and that's playing lights out so far in this game. Third down and one, and the 252-pound DJ Uwe Ungo play, and it'll be a first down for the state. I, I think that's going to make those situations a little bit easier for Mike Norvell, right? I mean, quarterback runs with DJ U at 250 look a little bit different. It's not going to be the finesse runs of zone reads and things maybe they've done in years past with Jordan Travis. It's it's more downhill QB power, like what you just saw right there. I mean, you mentioned Jordan Travis. I, I, I still reflect on last year. What a sensational year. Leads number one in Florida State history and career touchdowns responsible for, of course, the horrific injury and everything that happened down the stretch. But what an all-time great will be in program history just based on last season alone and what an inspiration he was to his teammates. First down to a feely. Kept his balance for a moment before he was taken down. Zach Toby. Well, DJU, he, he took a pretty big shot there in that last third down run, short yardage situation. He's a big guy. He likes to take 
defenders on, going to the ground. He gets blasted right in the head by Clayton Powell Lee. DJU's going to crank it up, take a shot downfield, and threw it to the outside of Malik Benson. Well, you've seen these last two drives now. Mike Norvell trying to open it up in the passing game, and they're, they're at least trying to take shots to get behind this Georgia Tech secondary. They still haven't had tons of success, but it's you got to at some point try, because up until this point, a lot of these secondary players for Georgia Tech are just putting their heels in the ground, and they're just attacking everything downfield. That time, the Alabama transfer actually got behind the corner for Georgia Tech. If you're DJU, you just got to keep it in bounds to at least give your wide receiver an opportunity. Third down and seven. Jalen Lucas comes in. New back return specialist. Good on third down out of the backfield. DJ is pressured and taken down. They got to him. That was strong by Kevin Harris. Well, the third down blitz package is starting to take its toll now on Florida State. They brought a linebacker right up the middle. Tranilius Tatum, and they also brought a safety in Tay Seymour, and it was just too much. Basically, Jalen Lucas, 170 pounds, is back there, and, and he can't he can't get it done in pass protection. This new sub package for Georgia Tech, I know we keep talking about it, but it's a totally different animal now playing against the Yellow Jackets. Mastromato. Oh, he's blown up right at the 10-yard line was Rodney Shelley. Shelley's lucky that he held on to the ball because Edwin Joseph, the backup corner, was just tearing down the field as John Papuchas' special teams has been on fire today. That's been the big difference in this game. We've seen the field goals, we've seen the two-point play, and then Edwin Joseph was laying the hammer for Florida State. We've got a good one here in Dublin, Ireland, Joe. Back here for the 2024 Aer Lingus College Football Classic. That is a Irish tin whistle on the streets of Dublin. Not far away here at Aviva Stadium. 14-14 between number 10 Florida State and Georgia Tech as Haynes. Avery Boyd. It's a nice play call there by Buster Falk for Georgia Tech. They've had a lot of success with these handoffs in between the tackles that time. Hans King keeps it, just spits it out to Avery Boyd, who was a receiver. He's a guy that's played running back in this offense, a big athlete from Tallahassee, Florida, showing you the speed on the outside. 6'2", 230, and now playing in that hybrid position for this offense. 14 yards with Avery Boyd. Haynes King can't find much there, bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. Tallahassee takeover here in Dublin. And you can hear them time and again when Georgia Tech is on offense and they're supporting that Knowles D. Haynes King gets it out and gets it complete to Chase Lane. And that was a busted coverage by Florida State. That time Georgia Tech went into motion. Nobody followed Malik Rutherford across the field. And essentially, Georgia Tech had two receivers working the right boundary against only one defender. Get the ball out quickly again, quick to the line. This is Rutherford. Let's watch that coverage on Chase Lane. So Rutherford, he comes across in motion right there. You see no one's over there with him, and Chase Lane in the slot, he's working against the safety, Shaheen Brown, who was lined up in the middle of the field. Good thing Shaheen Brown was able to jet over there and make a tackle. Otherwise, that could have been a much bigger game. And a quick five yards to Rutherford, now second and five, with the ball cresting right at midfield. The 
go with the jet motion, Rutherford again, and Rutherford will get a first down for Tech. And that's the hard part, right? Because you've seen jet motion, jet motion, jet motion. Most times they're not handing it off, and after a while the defense kind of falls asleep. We're not going to give it to them, so we're not going to respect it. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they hand it off, and you get a, a back with that kind of speed out in space, and, and it's just dangerous again. This style of offense with all the eye candy and misdirection, it just forces you on D to have to be so good with your eye discipline. First down at the 41 of Florida State. Haynes King being chased, being pressured, and then has to dump it up to Singleton, and Singleton, they're gonna say he stepped out at the 34-yard line. But Eric Singleton was there for Haynes King when he needed him. Pretty impressive by Haynes King, too. Work the pocket, avoid rushers, keep his eyes downfield to get to his third read in Singleton. And surprisingly, might be the best player on offense for Georgia Tech in Singleton. That's his first catch of the game. Buster Faulkner, second season as the offensive coordinator at Georgia Tech. Second three. Seven, the right guard, Keelan Rutledge. He was the only guy there with a whole lot of gold. That was a bad exchange between Haynes King and Jamal Haynes. It looks like the quarterback put the ball into the belly, right into the belly, between the one and the one. The last second, he was trying to pull it out to get outside. We saw Byron Turner crashing in on the play, and Georgia Tech, so lucky to jump on that football. It's a loss of nine. That's the first football put on the ground today. Third down and 12. Pressure on King, and he gets the crossing route and a first down to Rutherford. Haynes King comes up big. And another phenomenal job by Haynes King under duress. Marvin Jones coming from the right side. Look at the spin move in. He's going to get a clean hit on him, and King again able to stare down the gun barrel there. Throwing it around a defender from Florida State right into the belly of his intended target. Two really good looking throws, these last two attempts for Haynes King. Alexander gets inside the 25. I, I love this offense from Buster Faulkner. It's so much fun to watch. He's been a really successful offensive coordinator for 10 years. Southern Miss, Arkansas State, Middle Tennessee. But it's when he went to Georgia for three years to learn under Todd Bunkett. He was on the quality control staff, but he had a big part to play in the game plans week in, week out for Stetson Bennett at quarterback that he learned the NFL style of offense, blended it with his own air raid background. And now that's what you're seeing here at Georgia Tech. Second and five. Empty look for King. He's going to try to run it himself, and he does so with success. Inside the 10, inside the five. Folks, it's first and goal. Georgia Tech looking to take the lead. And that's a great run pass option here. This is going to be a throw, but if he doesn't like it, he's got his center, Weston Franklin, running out into the second level on the QB draw. We'll see here only five defenders in the box for Florida State, and that's the key right there for Haynes King to tuck it and get north. And again, Joe, the strong running you see from Haynes King week in, week out. The guy does not like the slot. And those final seconds of the third quarter are counting down. And the number 10 team in the country with national title hopes and all the new talent has got themselves a good old fight in Ireland. We're back in Dublin with Mike Norvell. Mike, what do you got to do to get a goal line stand here? Well, you know, obviously we, we've got to make sure that we're sustaining our drives. We've had a couple of opportunities. We've moved the ball. We've gotten to positive uh, territory. But, you know, obviously we've got to continue to capitalize. Had a few missed opportunities. Uh, they've done a good job, you know, creating a pass rush. You know, we've got to be able to get the ball out, um, you, know, you know, get separation. And then, obviously, we've got to make sure we're finishing we're finishing plays there defensively. Had an opportunity uh, with the ball on the ground. We've got to make sure we, we you know, capitalize there. And obviously got to stop the run. Uh, quarterback's doing a good job. Extended plays. Thank you. Thank you. Ups. 
Upset seeking Georgia Tech starts the fourth quarter with a chance to take the lead. And up and over and in goes Jamal Hayes. starts for this fourth quarter. Jamal Haynes capping the long drive. And Aiden Burr, sir, puts it in to make it 21 to 14. Just can't say enough about the physicality up front from Georgia Tech. That time, Jordan Williams, the right tackle, he's going to slant down here on Farmer, an all-conference ACC defensive lineman. He's gonna just slam him on the ground. He'll pivot, throws him down. There's a bit of a pile up and over easy for Jamal Haynes. And I gotta be honest, Joe, I, I'm surprised that Georgia Tech's physicality has been winning the day up front offensively against this vaunted Florida State defensive line. Brent Key, the head coach, how much pride does he take in that offensive line play? He's a former offensive line coach himself, and like I think just his own line, they just embody his physical and mental toughness. How about Haynes King, though, on this drive? This is critical on third down, finding his check down outside to Singleton, and then here, for getting tackled, throws it over the middle of the field, and Malik Rutherford takes off here on the pass run option. Quarterback draw. He hadn't seen a lot from Haynes King throwing the football up until this drive, but he has shown you time and time again his toughness running it. That was just a beautiful drive. Here's Lucas from the end zone. And he is wrapped up at the 17. Guy who had three kickoff return touchdowns when he was at Indiana. Labor Day weekend football lineup. We're going to get things started Thursday, North Dakota State, Colorado. Yeah, Oklahoma in action on Friday night, and then this outrageous triple header Saturday. Clemson against number one Georgia Noon on ABC. Miami and Florida 3.30 on ABC. And Notre Dame and AM in prime on ABC before we get to Sunday night with USC and LSU rolling the dice in Vegas on ABC. I'm excited, Joe. Obviously, we've got an ACC matchup here in front of us now. You and I are going to watch Miami at Florida next week. And talking about the transfer portal, Cam Ward at quarterback coming in from Washington State. Damian Martinez at running back for Oregon State. They're just going to see the kind of impact they have on the Canes' offense. Florida State now trailing. DJ Uyungle being chased, but he smartly gets it out to Douglas for the first down. Yeah, so DJU, he's got to lock in here throwing the football, no question. We've seen a couple of big misses down the field from DJU. His last couple of drives, this is where they need him to be at his best. Mark, uh, Mike Norvell now is opening up the playbook, and he's allowing him to push it downfield. He's had time to throw. He's got to connect. Goes for 14 yards to Douglas. They didn't punt in the first half. And two drives and two punts in the second half. And now this drive starts with the completion of Douglas here in the fourth quarter, trailing by a touchdown, as that was Kyle Efert meeting Toa Feely right in the hole. What a run fit. Well, that's what I'm talking about, right? I mean, he sees the guard pull, he shoots the gap, he gets over, he just finds the ball, and he gets guys on the ground. He's, again, he's going to be the leader of this defense, and they'll play as he plays. His physicality in the middle of the field for Georgia Tech has just been remarkable. Florida State only trailed three times in the fourth quarter all of last season. That magical ride they had to become ACC champions with adversity late. And now they start this year trailing in the fourth quarter to this fiery Georgia Tech team who comes up big again as LaMiles Brooks undercuts Roy Dell Williams. And at that time, Ja'Kai Douglas in motion at receiver, and he runs right by LaMiles Brooks. Let's look at number one on the right side of the formation. He's going to shoot this. And it's just too late for Ja'Kai Douglas to get the stop. I've been impressed with Georgia Tech's tackling in this game, Joe. Maybe none more so than the secondary. We've seen Amari Harvey make some big stops at the corner position. That time, it's the safety of LaMiles Brooks. It is third and ten. DJ Wu 
Gets it to the outside, right at that line to gain to Malik Benson. That is a big throw and a big movement to move those chains. And it's a nice block by Roydell Williams, the running back. We saw him on the touchdown run to Toa Feely do this earlier. Right here, there's going to be a blitz coming from Clayton Powell. He's able to pick it up. It's not a pancake block, but he does enough to get DJ Uchts a little bit more time to complete that throw outside to Benson. Right at the stick. Play action. DJ downfield again, thrown far to the outside of Benson. I think that time, DJ, you missed a wide open throw in the middle of the field. I think he had two span running a basic in route in the middle of the field. There was nobody there. Look to the left of the side, left of the field right there. Sorry, it's Jalen Brown, number six. And right here, there's a big in throw and a completion to be had. He puts that out in front of him. He can catch it and advance it. Just another missed opportunity in the pass game. Play action. Quickly getting it into Portier's hands. And that's a first down goes crossing midfield. I want you to see this block by Maurice Smith in center. Picking up a blitz, it was unbelievable. LaMiles Brooks at safety was trying to shoot the gap. He got absolutely baptized that time by Maurice Smith. Giving DJ U a chance to throw. James dad watching his son trying to rally here in the fourth quarter. And here looking for anything in the quarterback run game as he goes for two yards and was met again by Eifert. Oh my God, so LaMiles Brooks is a safety. He's going to be shooting from here. Watch big center Maurice Smith, what he does. Boom. <laughs> it wasn't the safety, it was Cornelius Tatum. But man, he went down hard. You've seen some good pass pro here. On Florida State's offensive line and running backs on this drive. Second and seven. Cam Davis, the true freshman, big back in the game here. DJ. Going to give the ball. He is met. He's going to have a very great future, but right now Omar Daniels able to get to him. And it's going to be another big third down, Jesse. So here's the big substitution for Georgia Tech. They've got four fresh bodies now on the field, and the blitz packages from Georgia Tech on third down have been giving Florida State problems all game long. I think if you're DJU here, are you anticipating blitz? Got to be communicating these offensive linemen. Right now, they're bringing in their tight end, Brian Courtney, to help out, number 86. Now, Morlock, the other tight end, comes in as well. Here's your third down and seven. Louis Ungale looking for the back shoulder, incomplete, thrown to the outside of Kyle Morlock. And Rodney Shelley had coverage. Decision time here for Mike Norvell. I think they're going to go. Ten minutes to play. Top ten team in the country. Trailing by seven. Tyler Santucci, instant impact defensive coordinator added to this staff. Came over from Duke, spent time at AM. He has made a difference immediately. Fourth down and seven. Got time, and he's got a man! Ja'Kai Douglas, first down, Seminoles. That time, Georgia Tech only rushed three, and Florida State did a really nice job of just giving him time, building a nice pocket. The 6'5", Uyungle LA, great job sliding to his left, keeping his eyes downfield, and finding Douglas, who sits down in the middle of the zone. 20 yards to Ja'Kai Douglas on fourth and seven. Well done by DJ Uwe Ungalale. And tackled for a loss. That was height. Romello height darting in. And one of the reasons why when you pull tackles in the run game, it can be dangerous, is the defensive end rushing from that side has a clear path to the football. And when you're as athletic as number nine height, look at that. It's just too easy to get into the backfield and 
get a TFL. A loss of three. Short pitch, Williams. Williams is met at about the 21 yard line. Miles Brooks getting involved again. That's just a good example again of sound defense by Georgia Tech. Trenelius Tatum doesn't make the tackle at linebacker, but he makes the play. He got outside leverage, forced the ball to go back inside. They were able to prowl and make a stop, setting up another third and long. Really, really been impressed just with the assignment football, how everybody seems to be on the same page for the Yellow Jackets. Those precious seconds counting down. We're under eight and a half minutes to play. Florida State, top ten in the country, trailing by seven against the upstarts from Atlanta. Third down and nine. Williams, as he bumped into his quarterback. And they are going to be facing fourth down again. And by that play call, Joe, Feels like this was four down territory for Mike Martin. Very much so, Jesse. Gonna go for it no matter what. I mean, there's still a lot of football left. You know, maybe he doesn't have a lot of confidence right now in his defense that he can get a stop against the rushing attack from Georgia Tech and get an opportunity. So, a lot of time here still to go in the football. It seems like Mike Norvell pushing a lot of his chips in the middle of the table. Saw the analytics come up. Fourth down and eight. It said analytics set go, and that is what Mike Norvell will do. Fourth down and eight. DJ. They did it again. First and goal. Benson holds it in. How about these gutsy knolls on this drive? One on one to the outside, and Benson has to win on the slant. He does just that. Really nice patience on this route, setting it up. Puts his foot in the ground, gets to the middle of the field. Another accurate throw from DJU and Florida State in business. And this will be the 15th play of this seeking to tie it. Fourth quarter drive. Is there any mystery here, Joe, is that the 250-pound quarterback downhill? Flanked by Williams. Williams into the end zone. What a well-managed drive by DJU, Mike Norvell, Douglas and Benson, and then capped by Williams. Two for two on fourth down on the drive. Joe, I think it's drives like that for DJU. You want to create buy-in in the locker room over the course of the season. You show up with two huge throws on fourth down to get your team into the end zone with an opportunity now to tie this up. Phenomenal leadership by DJU there and tremendous execution. I mean, a 15-play drive. And then Fitzgerald with the extra point to tie it. But Jesse, 15 plays in nearly eight and a half minutes with the fourth down tosses. DJ Uwe Ungole, two for two on fourth down. And then Roy Dell Williams, a transfer from Alabama. And boy, oh boy, is it good to have ball back, folks. We got one today. For Jesse Palmer, Katie George, back with you in Dublin, Ireland. We got a thriller. And how about Florida State on that last drive? As they went 15 plays and 84 yards. And coming into that drive, they only had two drives in the second half with two punts and 33 yards of offense. Well, just saw the, the DJU heroics on that last drive on fourth down, but Haynes King before that was pretty good himself. Yes, throwing under duress, throwing out to Singleton here in the flat. That was a big pickup and a big play. And his throw to Rutherford over the middle of the field is just phenomenal. And then, of course, you see his dynamic ability to keep the football and run it himself. You know, Last year, he really was one of the better dual threat quarterbacks in the country. But his athleticism really is what makes him unique. He's going to need that right here in a critical part of this football game on designed runs, but also his ability to extend plays and get away from his pass rush. Now Haynes King out there, game tied up, six and a half minutes to play as he quickly gets it out and gets it complete immediately that time to Rutherford. Coaches will tell you with Haynes King, they say, we will confidently say, 
that he's the most underrated player in the country. They feel he's the best quarterback in the ACC, most underrated player in the country. Well, if it hadn't been for 16 interceptions a year ago, I think more people might be on board with that. But so far, he's done a pretty good job with ball security. Throwing the football has made good decisions. They had a near disaster getting a fumble back on a, on a uh, miss handoff zone read a few drives back. But for the most part, Haynes King and his decision making in this game has been pretty good. So Brent Key, the head coach, second full season as a Georgia Tech head coach. Second six. Trying to turn the corner as Haynes King as he gets it to the 33 yard line. There's a gain of four. At this point here, doesn't it just kind of feel like which of these defenses can get a critical stop and get it back to their guy with just about five minutes to go in the game? Georgia Tech's had success running it in a whole lot of different ways right here. Can Florida State in their front seven, can they match that physicality and get a stop? This is a big, big play in this game. Third down and two. And you see a lot of pointing over at that Georgia Tech side. There was some movement. And the flags come in. It's going to be on the right guard, Rutledge. A little flinch. And that all of a sudden. Third seven, Illinois a lot different than third and two. Number 72. Five yard penalty, third down. There's a good chance Brent Key and Georgia Tech were going to run the football there in that situation. Now you've got to throw it. We talked about the drop back game being the area Georgia Tech has to improve the most, and it makes it a little bit more challenging now facing these athletes Florida State has up front. Look at this setting here at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. The intensity of a conference game being well played with under five minutes to play and tied up and a big third down. King pressure gets it out, gets it complete. As Haynes gets all the extra yardage. And the Yellow Jackets are in business. Phenomenal decision that time by Haynes King. He's hot. He's got a free blitzer coming off the edge. His answer is going to be the running back in the flat. He never panicked. He gets his head in the right place. He gets it out early and allows Jamal Haynes to advance the football. We talked about the good decision making Haynes King's been making. And that's a good example of being in the second year of the system and Buster Faulkner knowing where his answers are. Jet motion, but he keeps it. And he's able to cut back against the grain and then get Franklin pushing the way and paving it out past midfield. A little road trader action from his center, Weston Franklin. He's going to need an ice bat. I mean, Haynes King's now carried it 13 times, but none of them have looked nice. I mean, every time he's dragging guys to the ground, they're jumping on him. They fake the jet sweep to Singleton. And that's just, that's just all Haynes King right there. I mean, they, they had him wrapped up about two yards downfield. Tough, tough runner, man. This guy has left his heart out on the field. The got, Yellow Jack. He got four yards after contact there. Second down and three. Georgia Tech is past midfield. Remember, they got the big leg of Aiden Bird. They need it. Did miss from 51, but he's willing. Alexander. And it's another first down for upset-seeking Georgia Tech. Yeah, this you cannot say enough about this offensive line, Joe. I mean, two years ago, offensive line was bad at Georgia Tech. Last year, they played so much better. Led the conference in rushing, fewest sacks per game. They had four starters coming back this season, an all-conference transfer in Keelan Rutledge. You cannot say enough about the job their offensive line coach, Jeep Wade, has done with this group. Totally transformed them. That was a big reason why they had seven wins a year ago. Man, they are showing up right now. Look at, look at old Jeep Wade down there right now. Loving what he's seeing. Here's Haynes King. Chased to the outside on first down by Conrad Hussey. 2.32 to play. Both teams have all three timeouts, Jesse. Yeah, and you were mentioning a second ago, Aiden Bird, the kicker for Georgia Tech. Joe, he made a 62-yarder in the spring game. He did. So technically, Georgia Tech is already well within his field goal range in this one. Yes, he did miss earlier. 
from 51, but he's got plenty of leg, and you got to be careful now if you're Haynes King, because you're, you're already within within the range. So no sacks, you can't take tackles for loss. And remember, one of the new additions to the landscape of college football, the two-minute timeout. Welcome to it. And with that, we take the break. 21-21, first game of this dynamic season ahead. The Air Lingus College Football Classic is brought to you by Ireland.com. Absolutely gorgeous coastline of Ireland. And we are on the east side, Dublin, just out of downtown at Aviva Stadium, where it has been such a festive atmosphere all week. Fans roaring, well-traveled, and they get this gem of a game to open up what we've described as the most transformational season in college football. The 12-team playoff has arrived, and this game is a perfect way to start. A top-10 team being pushed to the limit by the upstarts, Georgia Tech. Second down and seven for the Yellow Jackets. Driving at the Florida State 39-yard line. Haynes King has had some real big moments. What will he offer up here? Jamal Haynes. Wow. Close to that line of game. Well, DJ no, Lundy with the tackle. Yeah, no doubt. Georgia Tech here. They just want to play power football, pulling guys going downhill. They're going to try and bleed this clock as long as they can. They're getting further and further into eight burst field goal range. Try to keep the ball centered. The third and one. We've seen this Georgia Tech offensive line, Joe. They've won time and time again. Can they do it once more here? King's going to bring him back into the huddle. And Alexander is the back, but Haynes King, a good runner himself. And it's a first down, Georgia Tech. Coming up on just over a minute to play, and a timeout is going to be used by Florida State, the first of their three. And with that, we will take a break. A minute 11 to play, Georgia Tech on the go. Just a spectacular setting to open up the college football season. We're here in Dublin, and tonight, you can tune in on ESPN. Week Zero continues, 10th annual FCS kickoff, North Alabama, Southeast Missouri. MEAC SWAC challenges Florida A&M, Norfolk State, 7.30 on ABC. Gonna be good to sit back for months and months now and watch college ball, Florida State, They've won 15 straight as a double-digit favorite, and now here they are against this really fiery and gutsy Georgia Tech team that believes a Florida State team, Jesse, that has won 12 straight games against ACC opponents. And now with a minute 11 to go, the ball's on the Florida State 31-yard line, and it's first down Georgia Tech. Yeah, they just had a timeout, so they were just talking with coaches, trying to regroup. They were being reminded of what runs they're going to see, how to fit it, where to get aligned, what the timeout situation is. Easier said than done with the way right now Georgia Tech's lathering up this little line. Alexander right into the middle of that wall. Ball security right now is absolutely huge for Georgia Tech as Florida State's going to call another timeout here. That'll be their second. 62 seconds remain timeout. in regulation. We'll take a their short break. Second timeout of the half. Full media timeout. earlier tonight from 51 out just came across a little bit missed it to the right slightly or as Irish golf caddies would say grandpa's pajamas but he's gonna get an opportunity potentially here in the final minute what a scene beautiful sun setting over Dublin there's Burr he was a heck of a kicker as a freshman nearly making 90% of his field goals second and seven Chad Alexander splits out. Haynes King remains. How do they manage this final minute to try to pull up a big upset? Oh, the ball is out. Haynes King scoops it up and being chased down, and they lose yardage. Singleton was coming in motion. 
And a mishap sends Georgia Tech back. And that is a huge done force there by Georgia Tech. You're right, Joe. I think Singleton in motion, I think. Haynes King lost the football. The it looks like it just kind of crept up on him, hit him in the body. He tried to scoop it up and make something positive happen. Marvin Jones Jr. there, Shaheem Brown, able to make a massive play for Florida State's defense. Florida State used their last timeout, but that motion by Singleton, that was costly. It's a loss of 11 yards. And now the ball back to the Florida State 39-yard line. It's crazy about that because they have jet motion virtually on every snap, every yes. play. They do that all the time in practice. They do it all the time in games. And to have that happen at that moment, just could not have been worse for Georgia Tech. And now if you're Buster Faulkner, the play caller offensively, you go from, hey, we got to run the ball in center and try to kick this field goal. Now, you're not throwing to the sticks, but you've got to throw it or run the ball and get a big chunk of yardage back to give your kicker, Aiden Burr, a chance. So that mishap puts them in a compromised situation. They get it quickly to the outside to Singleton. And he drives his legs inside the 30, back to the 27-yard line. Singleton is such a special player, and the team's leading receiver a year ago. You haven't seen him make a lot of plays deep down the field. They missed him wide open. It would have been a touchdown in the second quarter, but he's made some big catches in the flat. He's done a lot of damage after the catch. That play there was massive, getting the ball down now close to the 32 and making this field goal so much more makeable for Georgia Tech. Looks like Georgia Tech's just gonna let this thing bleed all the way down. Try to hit a field goal here as time expires. Aiden Burr, a young man from Texas. Timeout, Georgia Tech, their first time out of the half. 32nd time. Of course, there has been incredible history with these two teams with a field goal on the line to win it. The block kick game of 2015, it was the Knowles going for it. It was Lance Austin returning it. It was a game-winning touchdown, and that was the last time Georgia Tech beat a top 10 team. Georgia Tech has lost 15 straight against top 10 teams since that magical moment against Florida State. And now, with five seconds remaining, Aiden Burr has a chance to be the hero. Too, Joe, right? You got the bus snap by Haynes King two plays ago. He spit it out to Eric Singleton, get a big chunk of the yardage back to set up Aiden Burr. This thing was working left, and it just stayed inside the left goalpost as time expires, and Georgia Tech gets the win. Katie George. Thanks, Joe. Brent, you start your season with a top 10 win. How impressed were you from start to finish from the performance from your group today? Yeah, uh, you know, coming into the first game, you feel like you know your team. All right, but it's really relative 
to who you are and who you've been practicing against for the last eight months. And I thought we had a good team. And when I say team, we have 100 guys, 120 guys that play as one. I mean, it's a family in that locker room. We got things to clean up, but the resiliency, the toughness they showed, that's exactly that's, it's who I thought they were going to be. As a former offensive lineman, how much pride did you have watching that group control the line of scrimmage? Are you kidding me? Run the ball. Well, you did that extremely well. You said yesterday you felt relaxed and confident coming into this game because you have Tyler Santucci on your staff. What did you think of the defensive performance? What about, you know, it's, this game's not, what up, man? Love you, dog. A sign of a great coach, isn't what they come out and they do early. Hey, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? It's not what they come out and what they do. It's how they adjust, how they settle in, and how they finish. What does it say about Aiden Burr misses a long one early in the game to come out and nail that for the win? Oh, I had 100% confidence. I mean, I'm over there talking to him. Ice man. You going to have a Guinness or two? Stick with the power raid tonight. We got a game next Saturday. Amen. Congratulations. Go oh. Jackets. Brent Key, a lot to celebrate. Boy, it makes the long flight home a whole lot easier. Oh, it sure does. And I know one guy who's going to be sore, who's going to need some ice, is that guy right there. <laughs> it's King, a quarterback. What a remarkable game, showing resiliency mentally, but physical toughness as well. Ran the ball 15 times. He took tons of hits, but put his offense in positions to succeed, made good decisions throwing the football. They didn't ask him to do it too, too often, but late in the game when they needed him to come up big, he was able to deliver. It just always seemed like he was in control. He looked like a guy playing in the second year of this offensive system, a play caller, Buster Faulkner. And it was late in the game and throws like this, under duress, but able to keep his composure and his poise. It took a while for them to finally find Eric Singleton late in the game. And then right at the end, when they're trying to kick a game-winning field goal, there's a muff snap that gets dropped. He's able to get that completion back to put Aiden Bird in position to kick the game winner. You simply cannot speak enough about the mental toughness of Haynes King and this team. Everybody's ride is different. The ups and downs, the adversity. Aiden Burr, who tore his ACL during his senior year of high school, who then couldn't play in 2022, was the backup when 2023 began, and now is the hero, Katie, here in Ireland. Baby. Aiden, congratulations. Thank you. What a way to start your season. What was going through your mind on that last field goal? I was just saying, lean on God, trust the process. You know, everybody on the sideline when I missed the first kick, the 52, they're like, you're going to get the game winner. So I was just getting ready for that, preparing for that, and glad it went in. When you think of all that you've overcome, tearing your ACL back in high school, not playing in 2022, being the backup a year ago, mm -hmm. how does this feel? Feels great. I mean, it. Dream come true, honestly. The game winner is the best feeling of your life. I know you get a lot of time to sit and watch, and you wait for your moment. What impressed you about the way that your full team played this afternoon? I mean, we just fought for the full 60 minutes. Defense, offense, played hard. And that's what we've been preparing since January 4, so it was a good game. Congratulations. Thank you. Bird never attempted a game-tying or go-ahead field goal in the fourth quarter of his career. And then he steps up here and does that. Man, you look at this program under Brent Key, they are headed in the right direction. You know, when Paul Johnson left, they only had 14 wins in four years, Joe. But they've taken on the attitude and toughness of their head coach. Last year, his first full season as head coach, wins seven games. They win their first bowl game in seven years. And today beating Florida State, Joe, they're now 5-0 and against ranked ACC opponents. They play up. This team has a real tough schedule this year, no doubt about it. But what a statement today here. Week zero knocking off the defending ACC champions. And we were so glad to bring it to you from the wonderful staff that came overseas to set it all up. We thank them. For Katie and Jesse, I'm Joe Tessitore. Enjoy the rest of your day as we get you back to the studio on Matt Berry.